Today we're going to dive deep into transform models for time series data, and we're going to look at a special type of attention variant called factorized self-attention. And at a high level, a transformer model looks like this. You have some input, flows into your transformer model, you produce some output. On an architectural level, we need to take our input, turn it into embeddings, which are numbers that represent the data. This flows into a series of transformer blocks that'll then come together and produce our output. And there's some connective tissue in there that I'm skipping over but this is kind of the idea. Now, if we want to dive inside the transformer block, it'll look like this. We have our embeddings. It flows into this time-wise attention layer, which we'll go over first. It's very similar to traditional attention in a large language model. Then we'll also have the space-wise attention block, which will take the context vectors from the time-wise attention and continue to add additional context to it. We might have that repeating multiple times, pass it through a feed-forward network. And again, there's some normalization and some residual connections happening here. And then this will produce our final output. This right here is our transform block. It can be repeated many times. And this is what we're going to dive into today is how do we get these embeddings in time series data? And then how do we compute this time-wise and space-wise attention? How's it different from regular attention in a large language model? All right, so before we can compute any attention, we need to take our input and turn it into embeddings. And to turn time series into embeddings, we use a technique called patching. First, let's fetch some data. You can see we have NVIDIA stock price here, just the close plotted in matplotlib. And then what we do to turn time series into tokens for the model to understand is we slice this up at a consistent patch length, it's called, into different patches, which is really just like every, say, 10 bars, we're creating a slice here. And that window, the data within this window here becomes turned into a single patch. And we do that for the entire time series. And then each one of those patches gets their own embedding and gets treated like a token. And this was popularized by a paper called Patch TST, which I'll link in the description. And so you can see here, we made a patch slice of 16 steps. So every 16 time bars, we slice the time series into its own array. And that becomes what we're gonna embed. And so if you look here, I plotted each patch from this chart as an individual chart on this grid. Uh, and you can see that these are just 16 time steps. And this is what we're gonna embed now, this actual series of close prices and timestamps. And now there's many ways you can embed time series. And quite honestly, it's a very interesting area of active research. One thing I'm personally interested in, but for this example, I just randomize a matrix of weights and then I project each time series into a dimensional space that I want. This method is a way that you can use another weight matrix for the model to learn. So the model can learn as it's training what weights to put in this weight matrix that'll help create better embeddings throughout the training process. Now there are other ways to create embeddings. But again, this is just what I chose for this example for simplicity's sake to just randomly use a weight matrix and project here. So we create this projection matrix, uh, again, re initialized randomly, and then we project our patches into a higher dimensional space such that we can capture meaning. And then what this looks like is here's the first five dimensions for every one of our patches, or rather the first 16 patches. And so we just have these, this giant array of numbers uh, it actually goes out to 256 dimensions, and the, the higher dimensions you have, it gives the model space to capture more nuanced meaning about your time series. Similar to how a large language model, when you have higher dimensional numeric representation of your text, is able to capture different nuanced meanings of your text data. That's what's happening here. Um, and again, there's many ways to do this, but we just chose to pick a randomly initialized weight matrix that the model would learn throughout the training process for illustrative purposes. And now if we wanted to do a multivariate time series forecast, we could get data from multiple symbols. So here we have the Qs, Apple, Nvidia, and gold. And we'll do a similar process where we slice those into patch lengths of 16 time steps and create these individual patches that then become embeddings in, as our inputs to our transformer block. All right, so now we have our embeddings. This is done. We have our arrays of input that we're gonna pass into the transformer block. So let's dive into the transformer block and see what's going on. At a high level, this is the process of attention. And remember, the whole point of attention is to take some input vector and add contextual meaning to it. So that's what we get on the output here is this context vector. Our input is our tokens embeddings vector, and the output is that same vector, but now with additional context added to it for that same token. Now we, we do these in parallel. So in reality, we're not just doing this for one vector at a time. We're stacking all the vectors together and doing matrix multiplication to process all this stuff in parallel. And that has been really why transformers have been so scalable is because of this idea of parallel computation, allowing us to process more data quicker. 
The query key and value matrices here are sized according to your model's architecture. This is a choice you make. And these matrices, the values in these matrices are learned through model training. They're constantly updated. And what you do is you take your embedding vector, you multiply by each one of these query key value matrices, and you get a query vector, a key vector, and a value vector for each token. And then conceptually, the way to think of these is the query vector is basically saying, what am I looking for? The key vector is saying like, what information do I offer to other tokens? And so the way I think about these query key value vectors is like this. The query vector is stating what information does this token care about? What information is this token looking for? The key vector tells other tokens what this particular token can offer them. Like what type of information is relevant? What type of information is provided? And then the value vector is the information that's actually contained within the token. And so the, the next step in self-attention is you find the similarity score using the dot product between every query and key vector for every token. And what that's doing is it's, it's lining these two up. It says for each token, what am I looking for? And then tell me how similar that is to every other token for what info they offer. So does the information you provide match what I'm looking for as a token? That's what's happening here with this dot product. We then use softmax to normalize that into these attention weights. And then we take this weighted value of our value vector to get the context vector. So meaning if I am looking at a token that provides a really good answer to the question to my query vector, well, then I'm going to weight that value, that information more. And that is how we get this context vector. All right, so now we have a good overview of the process of attention, but let's dive into what time-wise and space-wise attention mean, what the difference is here and what's happening. So in time-wise attention, what we care about is the sequential relationship between the patches of a single symbol. So we're not mixing data across channels. So in our example of four symbols here, we would take each patch and each patch would be looking at its attention score to other patches in a series. So like the queues would only look at patches in the queues. The Apple would only look at patches in Apple. And this is very similar to attention as we know it in large language models. It's sequential looking at each token in a series. And here we're looking at each patch, each patch embedding of a time series together, not looking at any other domain or, or data outside of a single time series. On the other hand though, space-wise attention will look at multiple variables at a given time step. So this is that same chart above, but now in the space-wise attention layer, we're comparing what happens to Qs, to Apple, to NVIDIA, to gold, all in the same time step. And that gives you different context based on the correlation of multiple time series. It still follows that same general calculation in attention, but it's looking at different shape of your inputs. All right, so to compute self-attention, let's just initialize our embeddings. So we're assuming we have four stocks here with 10 time patches each. So we're not computing the embeddings anymore. We're assuming we have 10 arrays of 128 values that represent each patch's embedding. And then so we're computing time-wise attention to start now. We're just going to initialize our query key and value matrices. These are the weight matrices that our model will learn. We're starting with them random here. And then we're going to project all of our embeddings from step one into this higher dimensional space, getting, creating these uh, matrices of the query key and value vectors for each token. And now we're going to compute the attention scores for each. And this is where we take our query vectors for every token, and then we multiply that by the key vectors for every token. And this gives us that similarity score. Again, what information do I provide versus what information am I looking for? We get these attention scores. We normalize that to then produce this set of attention weights. And these attention weights are multiplied by the value vectors to give us our context vectors. And our context vectors look very similar to what the embedding vectors do. They just now have been updated with additional meaning. And so we just did time-wise attention, which should feel very similar to regular self-attention. Now to review, if you see, we have this 410, 128 shape. That shape didn't really change from our input. This is the same resulting shape of our tensor from when we created our embeddings. And that's because the data is already shaped for time-wise attention. And so what this looks like in the attention mechanism is we have our each channel being a different stock. So that's our four. And then we have 10 patches, so P0, P1, all the way to P9. And each one of these patches is the token that's attending to each other one in this in series. So none of them are, are talking between channels here. They're all just talking within the series. And that's what attention is being computed between. Uh, and then we get this resulting four by 10 by 128 tensor. But now to do the space-wise attention, we need to reshape our tensor 
to capture the relationships between the channels. And so to do this, we need to reshape our tensor such that we have these four different stocks are really 10 channels of different patches at the time step. So this way we create these slices and then the patches between symbols are now being compared. And you do this for every time step in the sequence that you're training on. But now like technically these 10 slices are not necessarily channels in the conventional sense, but that's what helps me think of it is now we're doing space wise attention. So if we're looking at our tensor, the channel dimension is effectively these time steps. And then our patches are all the patches for the multiple variants we're looking at within the, each time step. In this case, we have four different symbols. And so that's why we get this 10 by four by 128 tensor, 128 again being our dimension size per patch. So we need to reshape our data into that and then walk through the same attention mechanism. In reality, what you would do is take the context vectors with the time-wise attention and then pass them into the space-wise attention block. But for simplicity, I'm just gonna recreate our embeddings to the initial 410 by 128 size. And you can see here, we're assuming a batch size of one. Also in reality, you can have larger batch sizes so you can train more things in parallel. Okay, so down here, we're just gonna replay our time-wise attention step, which, is very, which looks exactly the same as above. We have our 410-128 tensor. We compute our time embeddings. And now we have our vectors with context added to it. And so now we need to reshape our time context here to this 10 by four by 128 such that our embeddings now look like this and we can capture the space-wise attention as well. And so we do that here with this transpose to reshape it. And then the attention process is exactly the same. We have different query key and value matrices though that will be learned for this space-wise attention block, but we compute the query key and space-wise vectors for every token. We do our attention scores and we get our context. And now our output is this 10, 4, 1, which we can reshape back to the 410 128 to pass it through to the next layer in our transformer block. And so that is the space-wise attention. And again, there's normalization steps. We can repeat these blocks and we have our feed forward networks and then we're getting our output. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you insight into a different type of attention variant, specifically factorized self-attention for time series data. I am a time series research engineer. I enjoy learning in public. If there's anything I could have done better here, or if you have any ideas or you're interested in this type of work, please connect with me at bitsofchris.com. Give me any sort of feedback. Also check out all this code will be on GitHub and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.